Hey guys, got my old DeWalt impact driver here. Cool little unit. I used to use it all the time when I was uh, fixing welding and cutting equipment. I still use it all the time even now. Great unit, I love it. Seems to work pretty well except for one little problem that is the LED here. The little illumination light. It, it died soon after I bought it and I never really bothered fixing it. I kind of pulled the unit apart to see if there was some easy way to make it work again but it seems that the uh, LED in there is encapsulated or cast or whatever into the uh, bit of plastic. You see the little bit of black plastic there with the LED in the middle. So I just nah, put it back together and just forgot about it. Kind of been niggling at the back of my mind every time I pulled it out of the box. But it's just, um, yeah, wasn't a great priority of mine. So I guess we'll um, lift its skirt, see what's underneath and uh, figure out a plan of attack. Okay, so I've got all the uh, screws undone. Should be a matter of splitting the case and we reveal all the ugh, the schmoo inside, as they say. All right, we'll grab the uh, the switch out and that is our LED module just there. So it looks like, oh, it might be easier to repair than I thought. Looks like I might be able to pull that there out. I'll zoom in a bit and um, we'll have a closer look at this. So here's the uh, close-up of the LED assembly. I thought it was potted in. Maybe, maybe I was wrong. Maybe my memories serve me incorrectly. But it looks like we might better modify this. So you can see these wires, they lead all the way over to the, uh, the switch. But they're kind of integrated in. There's no plug there. So if I was to try and source just this from DeWalt, I have to buy the whole assembly, which is not what we want to do. That's not what we're all about. We're going to try and hack this and fix this. So what I might do is I'll see if I can pull this PCB out. It might be just a matter of uh, replacing the LED. So I managed to split this open. There was uh, some white silicon corking or uh, like silicon potting in there, which I managed to gouge away. It was all just soft. But it turns out this is what we've got inside. So it's positive comes in, 300 ohm resistor, then a 390 ohm resistor, white LED, and then our negative out. So it looks like they split the resistor into two, but it turns out the LED does actually work. So um, I'll hook it up and I'll show you. So if we hook up there and then we hook up to around about there. And if I turn the voltage up, look like at that. It's definitely working. So that's not the problem. What the problem is, is we're not getting a voltage out from our switch. There's no voltage coming out of these wires. So that means we're going to have to take this out, dismantle it and see what's going on inside here. So the, uh, the mystery deepens and gets a bit more interesting. All right, one sec, I'll get this thing open and we'll see what's inside. Okay, with a bit of careful prying and prizing, I managed to pull this switch apart. Got no idea how I'm going to get it back together, but I got it apart. And I found the problem. It's not actually in the LED. I'll zoom in. And maybe you can see it. Just, if you follow my pointer, just there. Look at that. Just there. A little cut in the trace. See what happens is, the power comes in through this tab. It pops up here, comes around to there, to that via. That goes down and off somewhere else. Jumps over to here through that via. Then on the underside of the board, it pops out just here, goes past there where that cut is, goes along, pops down over here, then back to this side of the board where it pops up just over here through this zero ohm resistor, this like link resistor. Then from there, it travels all the way back over to our positive out here. Then goes through the LED, then the negative comes back and the negative goes through into this microprocessor. So that microprocessor is what will be turning the LED on and off through the, uh, the negative side. So I think all we have to do is just put a little, I'll scratch back the uh, solder resist where that little nick is. I'll um, put a little tiny bit of solder blob there and uh, we, we should, have a, should have it fixed. Hey, this is cool. That chip is not actually a microprocessor. It's an NE555. It's a 555 timer IC. 
just a jelly bean part, ST Micro is the manufacturer of that one, and that'll be just running as an oscillator. So what will happen is when you pull the trigger, you see the carbon traces on the board here, you've got these little contacts just here on the trigger, and they're running up and down there, altering the uh, resistance, and then um, it's just altering the, the oscillator frequency to, to change the duty cycle, and driving that transistor to then power our motor. Well, that's pretty cool, that's pretty like basic, which is good, it's a uh, more rugged design, well, except for that little cut in our uh, circuit board there, but yeah, a big flyback die there for the uh, for the motor, but um, yeah, that's uh, not too not too bad at all, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So you can see the repair I've done here, I've scratched back some of the solder mask to the uh, wire here, so I could solder onto that point, and then just on the trace back here, the cut was through the middle, and it had damaged some of the uh, some of the trays and peeled it up a bit. So I've just taken it back to where it was nice and solid again, and just put that little tiny bit of wire through there. Alright, so I got the thing back together. It was a little bit frustrating, but um, a little bit fiddly, but yeah, I got it back together. It seems to be operating okay. So that's ready to go back in. The brushes are looking pretty good. I'll zoom in a bit. You can see there, they're a little bit chunked. And uh, that one as well. Just there. But that's not too bad. It's only on the very edge. There's a lot of meat left in them, so... ah. Not a problem, we'll keep using those. So here's the entire drivetrain assembly, all laid out from back to front as it assembles. So let's start from this end and work our way through. So we've got the uh, brushes here, which is uh, what I showed you before, they've got the chips on them, but we're going to reuse them. No worries, that's basically what applies the voltage, or allows the voltage to flow through to the, uh, the windings on the rotor. So those uh, brushes, they touch against the commutator, these segments here, and as that rotates, it's applying voltage in turn around the windings which then interact with the uh, magnets. So here we've got two sealed bearings, one on each end, so that can just spin freely. We've got the commutator there, that connects through to these windings. So when the, uh, the power comes through those brushes onto these commutators, it flows through around the windings, creates a magnetic field and that interacts with the magnet ring. You can see there's a, uh, like a, a molded plastic fan there that just lets the air flow through or causes the air to flow through and um, keeps the whole thing cool. And we've got our um, output shaft here with the uh, the splined, well, the, the gears cut in there. So then we come to the uh, magnet ring. There's four near to magnets in there and that'll be recessed in there a bit or something or glued onto that the metal ring and that's providing the magnetic force that interacts with the magnetic field that's produced by these windings and then that causes the whole thing to turn. Then the next one is we got this here plastic piece, that's the back end of the uh, the gearbox because it's actually holding the main rear bearing, that big bearing there. That's quite a large size because the, um, the output shaft of the rotor here goes through the middle of that bearing, but if that's a high impact plastic, which it looks like it is, um, let's have a quick squiz. There's no moulding marks on there that I can see that say anything, but if I get the knife, yeah, it's, that, that is reinforced. It seems like it's got some glass reinforcing in there. So that's going to be pretty impact resistant anyway. So that's not too bad. But I guess being a bit flexible might work in its favour too, uh, seeing as this is an impact an impact tool, if it was metal, maybe the impacts would um, cause the metal to fatigue and crack over time, whereas a plastic can just kind of flex and take that force. Then we've got the, uh, the ring gear here. This is part of the gearbox. So you've got the uh, three planetary gears, because they orbit the sun gear, which is that one from the, uh, the rotor that goes in the middle. So you've got the sun gear and the three planet gears. And this ring gear sits on the outside. 
and uh, cause the whole thing to rotate. So it gives a good gear reduction and it's very strong because you've got three gears uh, meshing rather than just one gear on one gear. It's yeah, three times the, uh, the meat in the uh, teeth and it gives it like a, a high reduction in a small package. So sometimes you'll see these things stacked up like what might be two or three lined up to give a, a very low reduction. Sorry, a very high reduction to a low a low gearing. That looks like it's a sintered metal, so that will be uh, powdered, put into a mold, and then uh, compressed and heated, not to the point where it melts, but just to the point where the uh, the metal fuses into a solid uh, solid mass. And then, if any machining's needed to be done, like you know, to true up the tolerances, then they'll machine that afterwards. And it'll be the same for these gears in here. They'll be um or uh, sintered, or this this carrier, it looks like it is. Oh, no, the carrier looks like it's forged, but the gears will be sintered. You can see the, the forging mark there. That's where it will be moulded in one piece and then, like, compressed under very high pressure, just, like, slammed. And uh, that compresses the grain structure, which, uh, which then makes the metal stronger. So this will be uh, probably forged as well. It looks like it is with the, uh, the texturing. Got a big spring there, so that spring actually compresses if I push it real hard. So if I rotate that, you can see how it kind of pulls in. It's on like a, a threaded shaft, a very coarse thread. So as the uh, the motor is turning, and it's trying to uh, turn the, the bit, which is obviously locked because your, uh, your screw or your bolt has stopped turning, this here will turn and pull in until such point that it pulls in enough that Whoop, it turns around and then the force has come off of this so then it springs back out it turns and hits there's your impact then once again it's locked so then it will turn very hard turn pull down off of that it will spin it will spring back up and then hit so it does that over and over and over bang 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 it's just skipping over and then hitting and you get your impact so this one here it's a bit hard to see, but that looks like it's probably not sintered either. That's This one here will be uh, turned out of a solid piece, possibly a forged piece, and then uh, and then machined, but it's probably just machined out of high-strength steel because that's taken a lot of force on those tabs. So that's looking, yeah, that's looking like a, a nice piece of uh, high-strength steel there. All that force through these. You can see it's starting to wear a little bit, the little shiny bits, but that's that's not actually uh, too bad at all. Bit of grease, and that'll be good for another good number of years. And I've, the uh, in the end, there we've got a hex shape, and that's where your uh, your screw bit goes into. Next down the chain, we've got a little Teflon washer. Now this is uh, doing two jobs. It's uh, acting as a thrust washer because it's uh, nice and slippery. And also, it's sealing the uh, bearing inside there. In there, we've got a, a needle roller bearing. Just in there. So basically, it's like a ball bearing, but instead of having round balls, it's got little rods or needles all the way around. So that gives very high sideways loading, because instead of just being a point contact, it's actually got a whole length. In this case, probably about 10 or 12 mil. So you can take very high loads this way, but it's got no support in and out. But that's okay because this thing is hammering, bang, 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 bang. So a little, you want a little bit of play this way, just so you don't bust the bearing out with all of that in and out force that the hammer is um, imparting. So there's a nice size bearing in there. In the uh, aluminium, that's a cast aluminium housing which has been machined where it needs to be machined to uh, to close up the or to tidy up the tolerances. And uh, yeah, there's no sign of fatigue in that either, so that's not too bad. Pretty strong stuff. I wonder if that's magnesium. It feels pretty light. It's either aluminium or magnesium. And then we've got a little rubber bumper that goes on the front there, just for a bit of a, a bang protection. So if you're hitting against things, it doesn't damage the uh, the metal there. And we've got the little chuck. So in the side of this, you can see that little ball bearing. That's free to move. It comes out, and I can push it back in. That's what locks your uh, your bit in here. So when you put it in, you see on the bits that go into these, they've got a groove around them. That ball bearing sits in that groove and stops this bit from falling out. Now, 
this collar goes over so when you pull this away that ball can fall into this gap around here and then that allows you to pull the chuck out because it releases from the groove in the uh, in the bit when you let it go it snaps back and it's pushed and held back in there by this uh, by that ridge and that will then lock your piece in there your bit into the the hole and then there's obviously a uh, a spring that's what pushes that back down so it's a spring loaded and we've got a uh, a washer and a spring clip that hold the whole thing together so my next job I want to clean all this out clean all the the goop and schmoo and groat and stuff that's in here I've got some new uh, molly grease which I'll grease this back up put it back together and uh, hopefully it works now a little trap for young players with this sort of thing you want to put a little bit of grease but you don't want to put a lot if you pack this in with grease the impact isn't going to work properly it relies on not having too much grease because it will create hydraulic pressure in there and it won't allow that hammer action to work so a little bit of grease in there is good too much no good same with the gears you don't want to put too much in there otherwise the grease causes friction like stiction or friction and it can actually heat up so it's the same with bearings when you grease bearings if you pack them full they can't turn properly all of that smooshing around of the grease causes the bearing to heat up and it can actually fail with too much grease so you want a, a good amount of grease not too much so I actually found the, what the part number for this thing is after I'd uh, cleaned it it's a PA6 G30 and that's polyamide 6 glass 30 so the polyamide is another name for nylon and the 6 is the uh, kind of like the uh, chain length in the molecules or the grade so it's a a nylon grade 6 30% glass fill so yeah as I thought got some glass in there so it's nice and strong and it, um, there's no deformation at all around the bearing races or where the bearing seat in there so it seems to be a, a quite well engineered part it's uh, doing the job no worries All right, so that's back together. Now to see if we actually fixed it. Ha! Huh. Looks like we didn't. <laughs> Damn. Well, the gearbox is sounding a lot better. Sounds smoother. So that's a plus. There wasn't a complete loss. So what do we do now? Well, there comes a time in a man's life where he has to make a decision. That is, do I spend hours slogging away at this, trying to troubleshoot it, fix it, and maybe, maybe fix it, maybe get it working, or do we just pay the 20 or 30 bucks and buy a new switch? I'm going to pay the 20 or 30 bucks and get a new switch. I've already had a go at it. I'm not going to waste time. I've got more videos to make. I've got things to do, so I'll uh, order a new switch and stick it in, but at least we got it back together with no leftover parts. So that'll go back in the box and wait for the switch, and uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, we got that Patreon going, so check it out. Keep watching videos, and we'll see you next time. Well, hang on, hang on, guys. Before we go, I did get the new switch. It just came in now, so I'll stick it in there. We'll see if this light works. So hang around. I'll be back in just a sec. We did it. Is it working? You know it is. Look at that. LED's perfect. No worries. All right, guys. I'll put this in the, uh, the junk bin. Might use some parts from that. And uh, this time for sure, End of the video, we'll see you next time.